Learn English Through Stories F3. Adapted and modified by Kolwant Singh Sandhu. Contents 1. Beware of Mean Friends. 2. Bhagat Singh. 3. Coeducation. 4. Grammar Page Uses of the 1. Beware of Mean Friends. Once upon a time, there lived a lion by the name of Mahasheru in a forest. Among his followers, a jackal, a crow, and a wolf had developed friendship with him. However, all three had a selfish motive behind this so called friendship. They knew that the lion was the king of the forest, and friendship with such a fierce creature would always help them. To meet their selfish ends, they started obeying and were always available at the service of the lion. They didn't have to make any efforts to search for their food, as the lion used to give his leftover meals to them. Moreover, they became powerful as they were next to the king of the forest. So like this, all three selfish friends were passing their days happily being the friends of the lion. One day, a camel, who came from some distant land, lost his way and entered the same forest where these friends lived. He tried his best to find out the way, but could not make it. In the meantime, these three friends happened to pass through the same way where the camel was wandering. When they saw the camel, at once it came to their mind that he didn't belong to their forest. The jackal suggested to his other two friends, let's kill and eat him. The wolf replied, it is a big animal, we could not kill him like this, I think, first we should inform our king about this camel. The crow agreed with the idea given by the wolf. After deciding, all of them went to meet the lion. On reaching the lion's den, the jackal approached the lion and said, your majesty, an unknown camel has dared to enter your kingdom without your consent. His body is full of flesh, and he could make a nice meal for us. Let's kill him. The lion roared loudly on hearing this and said, What are you saying? The camel has come for refuge in my kingdom. It is unethical to kill him like this. We should provide him the best shelter. Go and bring him to me. All of them got dispirited to hear such words from the king. They unwillingly went to the camel and told him about the desire of the lion, who wanted to meet him. The camel was scared to know about the strange offer. He thought that his last moment had come and in a little while he would become the meal of the lion. As he couldn't even escape, so he decided to meet the lion and left everything to destiny. The selfish friends escorted the camel to lion's den. The lion was happy to see the camel. He welcomed him warmly and assured him of all the safety in the forest during his stay. The camel was totally amazed to hear Lion's words. He got very happy and started living with the jackal, the crow, and the wolf. One day, when the lion was hunting for food, he had a struggle with a mighty elephant. The lion got badly injured in the struggle and became incapable of hunting for his food. Stricken by bad luck, the lion had to sustain itself without food for days. Due to this, his friends too had to go hungry for days as they totally depended on the lion's kill for their food. But the camel was satisfied grazing around in the forest. All three friends got worried and discussed the matter among themselves. They decided to approach the lion and said, Your Majesty, you are getting weak day by day. We can't see you in this wretched condition. Why don't you kill the camel and eat him? The lion roared, No, how can you think such a thing? He is our guest and we should not kill him. Don't give such suggestions to me in future. As the jackal, the crow, and the wolf had set their evil eyes on the camel, they met once again and devised a plan to kill the camel. They went to the camel and said, Dear friend, you know our king has not eaten anything from the past many days. He is unable to go hunting due to his wounds and sickness. Under such circumstances, it becomes our duty to sacrifice ourselves to save the life of our king. Come with us. We will offer our bodies to make his food. The camel didn't understand their plan, but innocently he nodded in favor of their plan. All of them approached the den of the lion. First of all, the crow came forward and said, Your Majesty, we didn't succeed in getting any food for you. I can't see you like this. Please eat me and make me obliged. The lion replied, Dear, I will prefer to die than to perform such a sinful deed. 
Then the jackal came forward and said, Your Majesty, Crow's body is too small to satisfy your appetite. I offer myself to you, as I feel I ought to save your life. The lion politely rejected the offer. As per the plan, now it was the turn of the wolf to offer himself to the king. So the wolf came forward and said, Your Majesty, Jackal is quite small to gratify your hunger. I offer myself for this kind of purpose. Please kill me and satisfy your hunger. After saying this, he lay prostrate before the lion. But the lion didn't kill any of them. The camel, who was watching the whole scene, felt reassured of his safety and also decided to go forward and complete the formality. He marched forward and said, Your Majesty, why don't you kill me? You are my friend. A friend in need is a friend indeed. Please allow me to offer you my body. The lion found the offer quite appropriate, as the camel himself had offered his body for food, his ethics were maintained. The lion attacked the camel at once, ripped open his body and tore him into pieces. The lion and his friends ate the delicious flesh to their fill. They feasted on the poor camel for days together. That is why it is said that one should always beware of people who become friends only to fulfill their evil desires. They might appear to be sweet, but they are never trustworthy in reality. Vocabulary Fierce equals strong and powerful. Camel has dared to enter your kingdom without your consent. Equals camel was very rude. He entered your kingdom without your permission. Refuge equals shelter. Destiny equals fate. Wretched equals very poor slash bad. 2. Bhagat Singh Bhagat Singh was one of the foremost heroes of the freedom struggle who sacrificed his life happily for the sake of his country. His heart was soaked in patriotism from a very young age. He brought a revolution in the national movement against the British rule. He was a prominent freedom fighter and inspired the youth to join the freedom fight against the British. He was born on September 28, 1907, in the district of Lyalpur in Punjab, which is now in Pakistan. He was the third son of Sardar Kishan who was a revolutionary himself in Vidiwadi. His father was in jail when Bhagat Singh was born. He was a very good student when he was young and very friendly by nature. Upon being asked what he wanted to be when he grew up, he said he would drive the British out of India. Bhagat Singh studied till the fifth class in his village school, after which his grandfather got him enrolled at the DAV High School in Lahore. Bhagat Singh was very agitated by the Jallianwala Bagh massacre in the year 1919 and the killing of unarmed Akali protesters at the Nankana Sahib in 1921. He was only 12 years old then and the incident left a very deep scar in his heart. He was always attracted to socialism and he set his path for political revolutionaries, which no one even thought of. He was clear in his vision and he dedicated himself to accomplish his goals. He dropped out of school and took part in the Congress movement. He actively supported the Swadeshi movement. He would wear only a khadi and burn foreign clothes. When Gandhiji withdrew from the movement due to the Chori Chora incident, his faith in non-violence weakened. He started believing that the only way to drive the British out of the country would be through armed rebellion. He studied the lives of the revolutionaries of Ireland, Italy and Russia and was convinced of his belief. He joined National College, which was patronized by great patriots like Lala Lajpat Rai. In the daytime he would attend classes and in the evening he would discuss the revolution with his friends. He contacted the leader of the Bengal Revolutionary Party, Sachindranath Sanyal, to join his party. But he could join the party only in one condition that whenever required he should be ready to leave his home immediately. He agreed and left home in the wake of his impending marriage. He reached Kanpur and sold newspapers for a living. Ganesh Vidyarthi, who was a revolutionary, offered him a job at his periodical office. He had to return home to attend to his sick grandmother. He supported Akali Dal's meetings. He went to Lahore and became secretary of Nadwan Bharat Sabha. He was arrested as police suspected his hand in the Dusaira bombing case. He was bailed out by two wealthy men. After running his father's diary for a while, he left for Delhi. 
Bhagat believed only in revolution to win freedom, and so he joined Chandraskar Azad. He shaved his beard and kept short cropped hair. Thereafter, he learned to make bombs from Jatin Das in Kolkata. In Agra, they set up a bomb factory. They continued with their activities even though they did not have enough money to eat. In 1928, when Lala Lajpat Rai died in a Lathi charge, Bhagat Singh along with Rudgo shot at John Saunders, mistaking him as Scott, the police officer to avenge his death. In 1929, he and Bakuteshwar Dutt exploded a bomb at the Legislative Assembly Hall in Delhi and shouted the slogan, in Quilab Zindabad, but they did not intend to hurt or kill anyone, but to express their disagreement with the ordinance of the Defense of Indian Act that was to be formulated. They surrendered themselves and they were sentenced to 116 days in jail. In the jail, he witnessed discrimination between the European and Indian prisoners and led other prisoners on a hunger strike to protest against this. They demanded equality in food standards, clothing, etc. After a month's strike, the British were forced to agree to their demands. Finally, Bhagat Singh, Sukhdev and Rudigal were convicted of assassinating John Saunders and exploding the bomb at the Legislative Assembly Hall. After the death sentence was passed, they were hanged on 23rd March 1931 at 7.30 p.m. in the Lahore jail. Even on the fateful day, they were fearless and competed with each other to be hanged first. While getting hanged, they chanted Bharat Mata Tijay. This is how the fearless revolutionaries sacrificed their lives for the sake of their motherland. That day, none of the prisoners ate food. Their bodies were secretly cremated on the banks of Sutledge. Even today, Bhagat Singh is remembered for his dauntless spirit. He was the source of inspiration for the youth of the nation. His sacrifice and unflinching dedication to freeing his country from the British would be engraved in the golden words in the history of the freedom struggle. The title Shaheed was awarded to him for his fearless contribution towards freedom. 3. Coeducation Coeducation is a system of education to teach girls and boys together. Greece was the first country to promote coeducation in ancient times. Now this system is prevalent throughout the world except in some countries. Every system or method has merits and demerits, coeducation is no exception and has its benefits and drawbacks. The ancient Greek philosopher, Plato, believed that coeducation creates a feeling of comradeship among females and males. Even in ancient India, coeducation was prevalent in some places. Like many other things, coeducation went through ebb and flow. Education of women declined drastically in India from the Middle Ages. A different system of education emerged. Boys were sent to gurukuls for the entire period of education to receive academic education and physical training, and girls stayed at home. In medieval India, it was not only women, but also people from so-called low castes were deprived of the benefit of education. They were not allowed to touch the scriptures, never mind studying them. Some social reformers tried to fight against this malpractice, but only succeeded slightly. However, the number of schools and colleges to provide education through the medium of coeducation is increasing. Without a doubt, the coeducation system is desirable economically as well as socially. It is cost effective to provide education to girls and boys together, one building instead of two, one teacher instead of two and other savings from infrastructure, energy bills, etc. Socially it promotes equality and boosts self-esteem, girls feel they are equal to boys, and it hikes their confidence, gives them a sense of pride, I am a girl, yet I can learn and contribute as well as boys, for boys, they become broad-minded and more tolerable towards girls, eradicate the delusion in boys that they are superior or have more rights than girls. Distance arouses curiosity and enigma. When this distance is bridged, a mystery is removed. There is no barrier. Students interact without hesitation. Boys and girls help each other. It creates an atmosphere of a family. Boys don't tease girls. Girls are not intimidated by boys. In the olden days, life was different. Men went to work and women stayed home to look after children and did the housework. 
Today the world has changed, self-awareness, technology, self-identity, etc. Patriarchy or a male-dominated society has no place. 4. Grammar Page